Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials and differential equations. This is video number 24 of video 1 in the subsection on separation of variables. Specifically, I'm going to discuss the theory of separation of variables. The previous videos to this all revolved around Laplace's equation. Video 20, I introduced it. 21, I showed how the property of having no local maximum or minima can be applied to electromagnetism. And in videos 22 and 23, I discussed the uniqueness theorem and proved them. Now, I haven't so far actually solved Laplace's equation. Now, Laplace's equation can be solved through the method of separation of variables. Now, I won't be solving it in this video, but I will be given an example of solving Laplace's equation three times in the coming videos. So, what is the method of separation of variables? Well, first of all, it's one of the most powerful tools you have in solving a second order differential equation. And how you do it is as follows. Usually, when we're dealing with real systems, we have very complicated functions. Let's say we have a function u, and it might be a function of three spatial coordinates, x, y, and z, and the temporal coordinate t. Now, in order to find out how this function changes with time or position or whatever it is, we must plug it into a differential equation. The problem is that when we plug it into a differential equation, it becomes a partial differential equation, a PDE, because we're dealing with more than one variable. However, if we had, let's say, a function only of one variable, maybe y, and we plug that into a differential equation, well, because it's only one variable, it's called an ordinary differential equation, and ODEs are very easy to solve. So it's obviously, the, it's obviously uh, sought after to change your PDE into an RD, or ODE, and the method of separation of variables does that for you. And it does it for you by making the following assumption. We assume that our function u, which is a function of four variables, can be broken down into the product of four other functions, each a function of only one variable. In this case, it'll be x, a function of small x, y, a function of small y, z, a function of small z, and t, a function of small t. So we make that assumption. And you might wonder, is that a fair assumption? Is it a valid assumption? I'm going to tell you that almost every equation in physics is solved this way, and it has always worked. The Schrodinger equation is solved this way. The wave equation, the electromagnetic wave equation is solved this way. The heat equation is all solved in the same way. It's all solved through the method of separation of variables. If you're discussing the hydrogen atom, for example, you will be using the method of separation of variables to separate out your azimuthal, your radial, and your uh, angular equations, or an and your polar equations. So anyway, this is how we're going to uh, how we're going to write u from now on as x y z t, and what we do is we plug this in to our original equation, which is the wave equation, and we're able to manipulate it in such a way that we will no longer be dealing with partial dif a partial differential equation, but we'll instead have a number of ordinary differential equations. So let's go ahead and do that. Now notice, by the way. The left side of the equation is taking the derivative with respect to space. So if I say that u is a function of s, a function of x, y, and z, and capital T, a function of t. Now the reason I've done it this way is we must only separate out one variable at a time, because I'm separating, it, separating out space. And I've kept, excuse me, I'm separating out time, and I've kept space together. So when we plug this new function of u into our equation, we're going to get the following. Well, the spatial derivatives are going, it's going to be the Laplacian of s multiplied by t. And the temporal derivative is going to be s multiplied by t double prime. I could write it this way if you want. So what we're going to get is the following. The Laplacian of s multiplied by t is equal to 1 over v squared s multiplied by t double prime. Now what we need to do is, is arrange it so we put all the variables uh, we bring all the variables together. So it'll be the Laplacian of s over s is equal to 1 over v squared t double prime over t. Now I know I'm mixing the, the uh, notations, but I'm sure you understand what I'm saying. Now, here comes the subtle part, and this is, this is very important, that what we have on the right-hand side of this equation is a function of t time only. And on the left, we have a function of space only, and they're equal. 
So what that seems to imply is that if I change time, I'm able to alter space, or if I move around in space, I'm able to alter time. Now clearly that makes no sense. So the only way that this is possible is if both of these functions are a constant. So we call the constant k. Now in video 25, I will discuss the characteristic equation, which is what we use to solve these. And we'll see that we'll be taking the square root of this constant, which is called the separation constant. So for that reason, and I suppose for, uh, I, I, just for, uh, I, yeah, just for looks or just for ease of writing, I'm going to call it k squared. Now, also in regard to the separation constant, we can have it a, a plus k or a minus k. They will give us different looking solutions. We might get exponential solutions or cosine and sine solutions. The physics will stay the same, but they will look different, and ap application of the boundary conditions will be easier. Say, for example, you have something which goes to infinity, an inner boundary condition, something goes to infinity. Often we will choose the sine of k squared to give us exponentials, because it's often easier just to analyze the boundary conditions with uh, exponentials. So now what we have is our, we have our solution. So I'm going to call this, just for argument's sake, I'm going to call it minus k squared like that. So we're, we will be getting two differential equations as a result. We'll be taking the Laplacian of s, and that's going to be plus k squared s equal to zero, or we take the t double prime, t double prime plus, one second after missing a minus sign here, so I think, no, that's no, actually, that is correct, plus, yeah, so we have t double prime plus k squared t is equal to zero. So both of these are homogeneous equations. Now notice that this equation on the right is just a function of t. So what that what let what that'll do is it'll give us the answer for t a function of small t. But on the left hand side we have capital S. That's a function of x, y, and z. So we still need to apply the method of separation of variables to this. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna talk in the next video how to solve each of these equations. So I'm just gonna skip on for the moment. So we have that the Laplacian of s is uh, plus k squared s is equal to zero. So we have the Laplacian of s plus k squared s is equal to zero. Now, s of course is a function, s is a function of three variables. It's a function of x, y, and z. So what I'm gonna do now is separate this out into a, a function of x and y, and z, a function of z. And I'm gonna plug this into our, uh, into our differential equation and let's see what happens. So, we're going to get straight away, we're going to get the Laplacian of a multiplied by z plus a multiplied by z double prime. Now that might be the, the z derivative, we want to write it that way. Plus k squared a times z is equal to zero. All right, so w that's, that's using the product rule on the, uh, the, the left-hand side. So we need to be, I suppose, we need to be careful here. We need to separate out the variables somehow. So what I'm gonna do is write it this way. I'm gonna take the, the Laplacian of A and I'm going to write, multiply that by Z is equal to minus Z double prime times A minus Z times K squared times A. So I'm gonna divide across everywhere by Z times A. So that'll give me an A here. So it'll be z, give me a z here instead of an a, and it'll give me a z here instead of an a, like this. Once again, we have two equations which equal each other, and they're equal for all times, so that means they must be a constant. I'm gonna call the constant L squared. And we perform the exact same procedure. So this time we have, we have the following. We have, uh, there's a z, we have, this time we will have minus z double prime over z, minus z k squared over z is equal to L squared. And that will give us an equation which when we solve will give us back z. Now we need to solve the Laplacian of a divided by a is equal to L squared. So we have the Laplacian of a divided by a is equal to L squared. And this is a pretty simple equation to solve again. So we bring up our a, that's fine. Now a is a function of x and y. 
So I'm going to make this substitution that a can be written as x a function of small x and y a function of small y. When we plug both of those back in, and you, you guessed it, we're going to get another separation constant. Let's call it m or m squared. Anyway, in the end, what you'll get is as follows. You'll get a solution for x a function of small x, y a function of small y, z a function of small z, t a function of small t. Now, the relationship between each of these will be the separation constants k squared, l squared, and n squared, like this. And we multiply the four solutions together, and we, we get the total solution for u. And that will be the solution for our differential equation. Now, while I have you, let me just change the separation constant here to n. And let me put a subscript on this. I ask you, have you ever seen those separation constants before? I'd be very surprised if you hadn't. They look to me that looks like the principal, the principal quantum number, the angular momentum quantum number, and this looks like the magnetic quantum number. So really what we're after seeing is that the method of separation variables gives us our quantum numbers when you apply it, for example, to the hydrogen atom. Uh, and that's, that's really how we do that. So separation of variables, like I said, it's, it's, slow, it's a slow process. You take one variable at a time uh, and you apply the method of uh, the characteristic equation, which I'll discuss in the next video, in, in order to solve each of the individual equations. So that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Actually, before I do that, I just want to show you one last thing, and I, I probably should, shouldn't have closed off the video there. There's one more thing which we need to know. If you take the integral, if you take an integral of sine m pi x over a, and you multiply it by sine n pi x over a, and you integrate that dx, I don't know, from z minus infinity to positive infinity, or whatever you want, or from zero to a, let's, let's say from zero to a. The only time that this will be non-zero, just do the integral, it's very straightforward. It will always be zero unless m is equal to n. And this is because the sine and cosine functions are said to be orthonormal, or ortho orthogonal in, um, or orthonormal means orthogonal and normalized. But they're said to be orthogonal in a mathematical sense, and this is the mathematical sense, that it's always zero unless the integers are the same. And it's this particular integral or this particular property which we'll be using in order to calculate the, uh, the coefficients when we solve the, the actual equations themselves. So now I'm finished. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel. And you might also give me a comment in the box below.